In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you for another wonderful day you have given us. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that today we are going to receive that gift that you have already put inside each one of us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, you are the best teacher. Every day you teach us the word. And again, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever we are, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to make this teaching simple, easy to understand. Let these words that are coming out from my lips be nothing of me, everything of you. Anoint my heart and my lips so that these words that I speak are the words that you want your people, your children to hear. Let these words not only be for my listeners, but also for me who is sharing this word under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, as you teach us today, make this teaching simple, easy to understand and help us to apply it in our life and to receive that gift of tongues, to receive what the Holy Spirit wants to give each one of us in the body of Christ. We thank you and praise you, Father, for all this. In the glorious name of Jesus, amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, as I promised you on Friday, after we had this talk on the Holy Spirit, today we are going to speak on the gift of tongues and how we are going to receive the gift of tongues. So I would request all of you in the class right now, to kindly switch off your videos, just switch off your videos so that there's no distraction. Thank you. Now, as I said, brothers and sisters, the gift of tongues is a gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of tongues is the gift which has been given to us when we received the Holy Spirit. And so when we know that the Holy Spirit has already given us something, what is our duty? Our duty is to understand what we have and to use it in our day-to-day -day life. So let us now take our Bibles to Romans chapter 10, verse number 8. Romans chapter 10, verse number 8. If you can take your Bibles, kindly switch off your videos, please. And we will only focus on our Bibles because we don't want any distraction. Please, I request all of you to switch off your videos. Romans chapter 10, verse number 8. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. So the word of God in Romans chapter 10, verse 8 says, The word of faith is near you. It is in your mouth. And it is in your heart. Now listen, brothers and sisters. The word of God is in our mouth and it is in our heart. We must understand that there is an order in which the word of God must be understood. It has to be first in our mouth, on our lips, and it has to be in our hearts. And you know, brothers and sisters, based on this word in Roman chapter 8, 10 verse 8, we understand that the word of faith, in order for us to operate by faith, that word should be taken out from our mouth. And the word of God says, unless the word of God is in our hearts, it can never come out of our lips. So the word of God, in order to come out from our lips, must always be planted in our hearts. And just as faith is evident when we speak words, when we open our mouth and we speak words, we know and we know that we are speaking faith. So if a person says, I have faith, and if he's only speaking facts, he's only speaking what he sees, what he hears, what he tastes, what he smells, everything based on his sense knowledge, the person does not have what is called as biblical faith, but he has what is called as sense knowledge faith. And in order to operate 
in God's kingdom in order to operate according to the biblical principles we must operate in God kind of faith a faith which is based on God's word so just as faith can be seen when we open our mouth and we speak words in the same way fear also can be seen from the words we speak when we open our mouth and we speak the facts we speak whether it's you know it's raining it's it's whatever we see is basically we are speaking facts and facts are always bringing in fear for example if i receive a doctor's report saying that i've got a particular xyz sickness now when i receive that report i can choose to reject that report if i have knowledge of the word of god which says in 1 peter 2 by his stripes you have been healed you won't be healed because you have been healed that's what 1 peter 2 24 says now i have got on one side a doctor's report which says that i have got an xyz sickness on the other hand i have the doctor's report uh, the the word of god which says that my stripes i have been healed now whatever i believe is going to decide the words that i speak whenever i have a situation in my life whenever i have a circumstance in my life whenever there is a negative any situation when i choose to open my mouth and speak that situation from my mouth and don't speak the word of god i am going to speak fear and fear is going to activate the kingdom of darkness whereas words filled of faith words filled according to god's word are going to activate a god kind of faith and a god kind of faith is going to change the facts and bring in a new fact according to god's word so brothers and sisters in order to understand this principle a little better let us go to the garden of eden god had told adam not to eat of the fruit of good and evil now he was obeying the word he had not touched the fruit but after some time god created eve now eve wasn't told by god not to eat of the fruit of good and evil but who told eve surely it was adam who told her so eve got the information about the tree not from god directly but she got it from adam and so she was not convinced that that was the truth so one fine day when she goes hovering around that tree without adam satan tempts eve and eve now receives that knowledge from satan she eats that fruit and she not only eats it but now she comes and gives it to her husband adam now adam had a choice he could have told eve god has told me not to eat that fruit but what did he do he took the fruit and he ate that fruit he disobeyed the word and you know brothers and sisters when god created adam he created him in the law of life there was no death god created adam to live forever because when god creates something he doesn't create anything to die he is the author of life but the moment adam sinned he introduced the law of sin and death that's what saint paul writes to us and so brothers and sisters ever since adam sinned the law of sin and death was introduced on this planet earth and we all even today if we do not know christ are under the law of sin and death now brothers and sisters if you see gravity we all know gravity because of gravity we are all able to sit down otherwise you know if you go in a place where there is no gravity we will actually be floating in the air you might have probably seen people go out of space where there is no gravity they don't they cannot sit in one place they just can you know move about because gravity won't bring them down as much as there is gravity right now and you don't see gravity with your eyes you don't even feel it but you know 
the effect of gravity. You have experienced the effect of gravity, which brings everything down to the ground. In the same way, brothers and sisters, there is a law of faith and there is a law of fear. God wants us to believe his word, which brings in faith and Satan wants to whisper to his lies, which are contrary to the word of God, which brings in fear. So fear and faith will come to us depending on what I choose to believe. If I believe God's word, faith is going to come inside. If I reject God's word and listen to the lies of the enemy, or I listen to anything which is contrary to the word of God, I am going to bring in fear and fear is going to bring in destruction and, dif and difficulties in my life. Now, brothers and sisters, throughout the day, we are continuously talking, aren't we? Sometimes we talk a hundred words. Sometimes we talk a thousand words. Sometimes we talk 5,000 words. For example, now what am I doing to you? I am speaking only words to you. Now we need to ask ourselves in a day, if we are speaking, say 2000 words, out of these 2000 words, how many words are we speaking of faith according to God's word? And how many words are we speaking of fear? Let's ask ourselves this question because this question cannot be answered by me for you. I can answer it for myself, but each one of us can answer this question for ourselves. For example, right now we are in the midst of a pandemic. You hear on the newspaper reports that, you know, number of cases have increased. People are dying and all sorts of news you hear. Now you can take that news and just hear it because somebody has by WhatsApp has sent that message to you. It can die with you. That news can die with you or you can open your mouth and share it with your family. And because you are so good in reporting the news of the world, you can actually forward that news to a lot of friends or you can choose to delete that news, not open your mouth and at the same time, open your mouth and speak the word of God and kill that bad news from your mind because you are not going to allow that fear to set inside. Brothers and sisters, the choice for us to be filled with faith is only our choice. One does not become a faithful person going to church or by praying or by reading the Bible. Many of us think that faith will come by us doing some spiritual exercises. No, my dear brothers and sisters, even by reading a Bible, Faith will not come. Faith only comes by believing the word of God. Let me say this again. Faith comes only by believing the word of God. What does it mean by believing? When I understand God's word and when I apply myself that word with understanding, I act on that word. Now I believe that word because when I understand it and I act on that word now what I'm acting on will always give me a God kind of result let me say this again brothers and sisters in order for me to operate by faith I must understand God's word when I understand it I have to put it into practice for example, if I have a mobile phone and I understand how to operate it, I know how to use the WhatsApp, the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram. I know I have a practical working knowledge of that phone. Only then I'm going to use that phone and I'm going to get the benefits of all the applications in that phone. In the same way, for me to operate by faith, I must understand the word. I must believe it in order to apply it and see the fruit of that word, see the application of that word, see the result of that word in my life. And that's the time I know I am believing the word of God. I'm becoming stronger in my faith. Let me give you another example. You know, I started engineering for four years. There are so many of us who started medicine, who became architects, who became, you know, different, different uh, pilots or whatever. Does it mean that as soon as I came out of college, I can start, you know, operating a person? Can I start operating on a machine? Can I start doing designs? 
Absolutely not. If I go to a garage, just visit a garage every day, can I become a mechanic? Absolutely not. But when I go to the garage, I take a car, I take the tools, I start opening them, I start applying my mind, I start using my hands, and I start working on those things. As I began to begin to work on that, now I'm getting that practical working knowledge and I am get becoming more and more expertise in my, in, my, in my field. In the same way, whenever I take the word of God and I start applying that word in my life, I start becoming you know, a, a doer of the word and seeing the results in my life, that's the time I'm going to operate by faith. My faith is going to increase. So brothers and sisters, in the same way, the word must be in my mouth first. The word must be in my mouth first and then in my heart. As we speak the word, it enters my heart. For example, when I go to the doctor and I receive the bad news, does it mean that I can either kill that news of the doctor there itself in the consultant's office or I can carry that news home, tell all my family members, inform all my prayer group members and also ask them, please pray for me because I have got an XYZ sickness. Now, if I want to operate by faith, I don't even need to know, tell anybody about it. But because I know the word, I can take the word of God and open my mouth and speak the word of faith and kill that sickness there and there. Brothers and sisters, operating by faith or operating by fear is not a choice. It is a decision that I must take if I want to operate according to God's principles. If I think that the Bible is only a theory book, the Bible is just like a storybook. I will never see the result of faith in my life. Faith, brothers and sisters, is practical knowledge. Faith is real. Faith can be applied. Faith can be used in our day-to-day -day life. And therefore, the Bible is not a theory book. It is a practical book showing us the knowledge of God, showing us the kingdom of God, showing us how things work. Now, let us go on further and see what Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says. Let us read that. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So faith comes from what is heard and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when, when we hear the word of God, that's the time faith will come. So in order for faith to come, brothers and sisters, if we are continuously listening to the word, news of the world, we are listening to the news on the television, we are listening to the statistics that are happening during this lockdown, we are hearing about all the deaths that are happening in the world because of coronavirus. Do you think when we hear all this bad news, faith is going to come or fear is going to come? So the choice in order to kill faith or to grow in faith is my own choice. I can choose to grow in faith by what I allow my ears to hear. Brothers and sisters, if I go to the doctor, I'm going to give an example only for the doctors today. If there are any doctors, you please listen to this very carefully. If I go to the clinic and the doctor gives me a report, and he says to me, an XYZ sickness. Now, after I have left the consultancy room, can that word which the doctor spoke speak to me? Can that word, even though he spoke that word in the clinic two hours before, do the words of the doctors keep ringing in my ears? And as I begin to hear those words over and over again, tears start rolling down on my eyes. I become so emotional and I start asking for pity. I start calling people around me. I start asking my family members to pray. I begin to become all emotional. I think it's time for me to go back home and everybody will be singing, coming home, coming home. Is that true? But brothers and sisters, when I choose to reject that word, 
when that thought of the doctor's report comes to me and I say, Lord, your word says that you, are, you have already healed me. I can cancel those words of fear. I can cancel those negative words, although that report is a fact. And I can now start meditating on the word of God. And instead of letting the doctor's word speak to me over and over again, even after I've reached home and even after a one week, when I take God's word and I start speaking that word over and over again on my lips, because what I'm going to speak with my lips is eventually going to go and enter my heart. The more and more I begin to speak the doctor's report, the more and more the doctor's report is going to enter my heart and it is going to bring in fear and actual destruction. But if I need to fight the good fight of faith, I must open my mouth because the word of faith is in my mouth and when I believe in my heart. So brothers and sisters, just as the words of faith activate the angels, do you know? The good news is when I open my mouth and speak the word of God, I am activating angels to go and bring that word to pass in my life. Let us read Psalm 103, verse number 20. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, the mighty ones who do his bidding, obedient to his spoken word. So what, are, what is the job of the angels? The angels are obedient to the spoken word of God. And you know, brothers and sisters, you and I who have been made in the image and likeness of God, when we take the written word of God, put it on our mouth and on our lips and speak the word of God, it is no more your word and my word, but it is now the spoken word of God. And when I speak the word of God, angels take that word and now bring that word to pass in my life. Let me say this again. The moment I receive bad news, the moment I receive the bad report, the moment I have a negative situation in my life, if I open my mouth and speak what that situation is, I am activating the power of fear. I'm activating the power of Satan. But if I choose to ignore the situation and I speak God-filled words, the words of faith, instead of speaking the words of fear, angels hear the words of faith coming out of my lips and they will bring those words to pass so that now what was intended to happen, what Satan had intended to put me into trouble, now angels come and change that situation and bring a new fact. Brothers and sisters, let me give you another example. If I give you the news, especially during this pandemic, that there is a report going out that at 8 a.m. in the morning, those people who are in bed, they die of a very peculiar sickness during these days. We do not know whether it is coronavirus. This is just an example. Please don't take it seriously. It's not happening. I'm just saying, if there is a report like this, would you ever want to stay in bed at eight o'clock in the morning? Surely not. Because you have received that report and you want to operate and you want to take, don't want that report to work in your life. But if you know the truth of God's word, that God says he has put his angels in charge of us. He has put, he's, you know, he's put a hedge of protection around us. Whether it is seven o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning, would I be afraid if I have gone to sleep late, I will continue sleeping well beyond eight o'clock and I will not be affected. Neither will I put on my alarm to wake before eight o'clock because I have no fear. I know what the word of God says. In the same way, brothers and sisters, when I eat physical food, listen to this very carefully. When I eat physical food, that physical food will come into my body, get into my stomach, start digesting in my stomach, and it will produce energy in my body. It will give out calories, which will make me activated physically in order to work and do my job. In the same way, 
when I eat God's word, it brings in a power within me called faith. And that faith allows me to receive everything that God has already done for me through Jesus on the cross. Let me say this again. As much as I eat physical food through my mouth, I can eat spiritual food by hearing and hearing the word of God. So how do I eat spiritual food? Not through my mouth. I eat spiritual food by eating the word of God, by hearing the word with my ears. And as I begin to hear that word, it enters my heart. It builds up my faith. And now I am operating no longer in fear, but I'm operating in faith. And now as I operate in faith, I can receive everything of God, which Jesus has done for me on the cross. Let us go further and read Romans chapter 10, verse number nine. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So in order to be saved, I must confess with my mouth and I must believe in my heart. Remember, brothers and sisters, in God's kingdom, the principle is very straightforward. I must believe in my heart and I must confess with my mouth. Now, my question to you, brothers and sisters, what is the difference between believing in the heart and believing in the mind? What is the difference between believing in the mind and believing in the heart? Let us say, for example, I've got a Bible with me. If I know that the word of God says that the word became flesh, the word became flesh. When I'm holding the Bible, when I'm believing in my mind, I am only holding a book, having some notes or some things written on it. Because for me, in my mind, that is only a book but there some scriptures written inside of it. When I believe in my mind, but when I believe in my heart, I am no more looking at it as a book, but I'm looking at it as the very flesh of Jesus. Remember brothers and sisters, there is a difference between believing in my mind and believing in my heart. Believing in my heart means I do not look at things as they are, but I look at the word of God as Jesus himself because the word became flesh. That's what it says in 1 John, it's first book of John chapter 1 verse number 14. So brothers and sisters, we do not need to beg God for anything. Let me say this again. We do not need to beg God for anything. We only need to believe. So in God's kingdom, for us to receive anything, listen to this, in order to receive anything from God's kingdom, I must believe in my heart and I must confess with my mouth. By believing in my heart and confessing with my mouth, this is how I am saved. Now, if I understand this as my foundational truth, now let us go and understand how to receive the gift of tongues. Brothers and sisters, keep this written down on your notebooks at this very moment. I want you all, if you have got your notebooks with you, please write this in capital block letters on your notebooks because this is going to be our foundational scripture in order for us to receive the gift of tongues. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, when I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth, then only am I saved. In the same way, when I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth, then only will I receive the gift of tongues. Can I say this again? I want you all to write down in bold letters on your, on your, on your notebooks so that you will remember this every single day of your life, not only for the gift of tongues, but to receive everything from the kingdom of God. 
I will believe in my heart and I will confess with my mouth. By doing these two things, I will receive everything from the kingdom of God. Let's go further. Acts chapter 2 verses number 1 to 4. Let's read that. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them. And a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. As the Spirit gave them ability, when the disciples received the Holy Spirit, they began to speak in other languages. They began to speak in tongues. Brothers and sisters, whenever the Holy Spirit has been received, the person also receives all the gifts that the Holy Spirit wants to give us. Let me say this again. When I receive the Holy Spirit, I also receive the gift of tongues, which is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit in me has already given me the ability to speak in tongues. This is the best news that you are going to get today if you have never used the gift of tongues. Because the day you receive the Holy Spirit, you also received along with the Holy Spirit the gifts that the Holy Spirit wants to give. And the gift of tongues is the gift given to every single believer who has received the Holy Spirit. So what happened to the disciples when they received the Holy Spirit? What happened? We just read in Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 that on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they began to speak in other tongues. Now you must remember, brothers and sisters, these disciples before the Holy Spirit came, they were fearful disciples. They were timid. They were hiding inside the closed doors. But what happened when they received the Holy Spirit? They began to speak in tongues. And, and when Peter and all the other disciples began to speak in tongues, the word of God says, Peter went out and preached the first gospel and 3,000 souls were added into the kingdom of God. What great news! 3,000 souls were added into the kingdom of God with one sermon of Peter when they received the Holy Spirit and started to speak in tongues. You know, brothers and sisters, the gift of tongues is like the master key that opens all the other gifts of the Holy Spirit. So in order for us to receive the other gifts of the Holy Spirit, we must activate the gift of tongues, which is already inside of us. We are not going to ask the Lord to give us the gift of tongues, because if we pray to the Lord to give us the gift of tongues, when we have the Holy Spirit, it is a prayer of unbelief. God is not going to give you the gift of tongues. With the Holy Spirit, he has already put the gift of tongues within you. And it is important for us to activate, to activate, to stir up that gift which is inside of us and release it. And today, we are all going to learn how to release that gift within us, how we are going to activate the gift of the Holy Spirit, and how we are going to activate the gift of tongues and take our spiritual life in an exponential curve and literally grow in the spirit. Now, before we go any further, brothers and sisters, if you got a pen and paper, I want to list down to you the 10 benefits of the gift of tongues. 
So I want you all to take your pen and paper very quickly. I'm going to dictate to you. Then we are going to study each of them. There are more than hundreds of them, but I don't have time in this class to take all the hundred. I'm just going to concentrate on the 10 important ones, the initial 10 ones. So in the meantime, I would request you to take your pen and paper and please write down these 10 gifts or 10 benefits of the gift of tongues. So if you're ready, the first one is tongues is the entrance to the supernatural. Tongues is the entrance to the supernatural. Number two, tongues is a prayer of the New Testament. Tongues is a prayer of the New Testament. You know, brothers and sisters, why tongues is the prayer of the New Testament? Even St. Paul prayed in tongues. You know, he prayed a lot more in tongues than he actually before he preached. He always said, whenever I want to preach, I preach, he says, I, I pray in tongues more than everyone put together. So praying in tongues is the prayer of the New Testament. Number three, tongues is a direct line to talk to God. Tongues is a direct line to talk to to God. Please write it down because we are going, I'm going to explain this to you one by one. Number three, tongues is a direct line to talk to God. Number four, tongues is the believer's direct access to the throne room of God. Tongues is the believer's direct access. Tongues is the believer's direct access to the throne room of God. Number five, tongues is speaking divine mysteries. Tongues is speaking divine mysteries. What is a mystery, brothers and sisters? It's a divine coded secret. What is a mystery? Mystery is a divine coded secret. So tongues is speaking divine mysteries. Number six, tongues is drawing secrets to live, to, to deal with complicated issues. Tongues is drawing secrets to live out complicated issues. So there may be a lot of complicated, difficult issues in our life and we need the wisdom of God. As we pray in tongues, we will receive the secrets how to deal with complicated issues in our lives. So tongues is drawing secrets to live complicated issues. Number seven, tongues is prophesying your God-ordained future. Tongues is prophesying your God-ordained future. So we all have been given a great future by the Lord. The Lord said in Jeremiah 29, 11, he said, I alone know the plans I have for you, plans for your welfare and not for your disaster, plans for the future that you hope for. And God has got these plans for us. So as you begin to pray in tongues, God, tongues is prophesying your God-ordained future, which is always a great future. Number eight, tongues is strengthening your inner man with might. Tongues is strengthening your inner man with might. My sisters, don't be upset if it is only inner man, your inner woman as well, with might. Tongues is strengthening your inner man, your inner self with might. Number nine, Tongues is keeping you spiritually fit. So if we have to go to the gym in order to get physical exercise, in order to stay fit, then tongues, by praying in tongues, you are keeping yourself spiritually fit. Tongues is keeping you spiritually fit. And number 10, tongues is putting you from the past into the future. 
tongues is putting you from the past into the future. Remember, the enemy wants to remind you of all your old life, your life of sin, your life of evil, your life of wrongdoings, your life where you have messed up without knowing God's word. But when you begin to pray in tongues, it takes you from your past life into the future that God has already ordained for you. So tongues is putting you from the past into the future. Okay. If you have all noted down this, we will, we will probably revise that later again. So let us open our Bibles to the first book of Corinthians, chapter 14, verse number 2. For those who... 1 Corinthians, chapter 14, verse number 2. And brothers and sisters, the first book of Corinthians, chapter 14, is, is the book in which... St. Paul is dealing with the gift of tongues. So I want you all to note down this chapter in your notebooks. First book of Corinthians chapter 14. We are going to go just a little part of it in this short time that we have. First book of Corinthians chapter 14 verse number 2. Let's read that. For those who speak in a tongue do not speak to other people but to God. For nobody understands them, since they are speaking mysteries in the spirit. So when you and I speak in tongues, the word of God is saying, I am not talking to human beings. I am only talking to God and I am speaking mysteries. Listen to this, my dear brothers and sisters. A person who is speaking in tongues is speaking mysteries. Neither does he understand what he's talking. Neither is the person who's hearing a person speaking tongue understand what he's speaking. But God knows that you are speaking because God knows what your spirit understands or what your spirit is thinking. Let me explain this further. You know, brothers and sisters, when I understood how tongues is so important, before I come to this class, I have actually preached this whole sermon, which I'm giving you right now, already in tongues to myself. Let me say this again. As much as I am speaking words to you that you understand, I have already preached this entire session to myself before I came in tongues. And you know how I did that? I spoke the mysteries of God. And when I spoke the mysteries of God, I know that in my spirit, I know that I want to share the word of God to my brothers and sisters. And so when I speak the mysteries to God, the word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number three, just read, let's read verse number three. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 13. I'm sorry, verse number 13. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray for the power to interpret. The one who is speaking in tongues must also pray for the interpretation of tongues. Let me say this again, brothers and sisters. When I speak in tongues, I am not asking God to help me to translate what I have just spoken in tongues. But when I speak in tongues, I ask the Lord to give me interpretation to decode those words I've spoken in mysteries so that when I speak the words, now what I've spoken in tongues can now be given to me as utterance of words that you can understand which I am speaking in normal English. So whenever a person speaks in tongues, he must also pray for the gift of interpretation of tongues. Remember, brothers and sisters, whenever we speak in tongues, I don't understand what I've spoken. Neither does anybody around me understand. Only God understands. And so I must speak in tongues and ask God to give me his wisdom so that when I open my mouth and preach the good news, now, it's no more my words, 
but it is the anointed word of the Holy Spirit decoded when I ask him to help me to interpret the words which I've spoken in tongues. So whenever a person speaks in tongues, he must ask the gift of interpretation of tongues. It's a prayer that you must make so that whatever you have spoken in tongues may also help you to make it in simple words so that your listeners are able to understand. The words are made so simple without having any theology or making it so complicated with philosophies and with so many doctrines, but making it so simple and practical that a person who listens to it can take that word, understand it, apply it and receive what that word actually wants you to do. And so brothers and sisters, at this point in time, whenever I'm speaking to you, it's no more, it may be my voice, it may be my words, but in effect, it is the Holy Spirit in me who's inspiring me when I speak in tongues to decode those words which I've spoken in tongues and to speak to you words and now the words that I'm speaking are anointed by the Holy Spirit. And when the words of the Holy Spirit are heard by the people who are hearing them, now that word will manifest in signs and wonders, will manifest and bring God's glory in that place. Remember, brothers and sisters, if the word that I'm speaking is not anointed by the Holy Spirit, the words that I'm speaking are not influenced by the Holy Spirit. That word will never ever create any signs and wonders. There will be no effect in that congregation. There will be just a nice little clap that it was a beautiful sermon, a beautiful homely, a beautiful talk, and everyone will clap their hands and go back home. But the moment they are anointed words of the Holy Spirit, not because of my wisdom, but the wisdom that comes through the Holy Spirit decoded when I speak in tongues. Now that anointed word is definitely going to bring a God kind of result. Let us go and read again. First book of Corinthians chapter 14 verse number two. We just read that, but let us go and see it again and see what it says. For those who speak in a tongue, do not speak to other people, but to God, for nobody understands them, since they are speaking mysteries in the spirit. A person who is speaking mysteries in the spirit, brothers and sisters, is edifying himself. Please remember, when I speak in tongues, I am building up myself spiritually. Please remember this, brothers and sisters, that praying in tongues allows me to edify myself, allows me to grow spiritually. And when I grow spiritually, now when I pray for the gift of interpretation, it also helps me to prophesy. What is the meaning of prophesy? Whenever I ask for the gift of interpretation, I may not know what your situation is right now in this class. I do not know what the problem is with you in this class, but the Holy Spirit knows. So when I pray in tongues and I ask for the gift of interpretation of tongues, the Holy Spirit knows what is the need of everyone, each one of you in this particular class. And as a result, even though sometimes 45 minutes pass, one hour passes, one and a half hour passes, you are still listening. And there are times you go to the church and the service has gone just over one hour. You're looking at your watch, wondering why are you still sitting for that service? But when you are listening to an anointed word of God, when you are listening to the anointed word of the Holy Spirit, you are staying there oblivious of the time that has been passed by, but has passed by and that word, you are receiving it with understanding. The word is coming into your heart. That word is coming with understanding and you are preparing yourself to apply it and receive the victory that Jesus has won. And so brothers and sisters, the word of God or by praying in tongues helps me to prophesy. And what is prophesying? 
Many people think prophesying is talking about the future. No, no, no. Prophesying is nothing but preaching of the word of God, which is anointed by the Holy Spirit. So brothers and sisters, when I understand, when I understand that I am going to be speaking under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, now I do not need to bother about the words that I'm going to speak. I don't need to take that worry on myself because I need to only make myself available. I need to pray in tongues. I need the Holy Spirit to inspire me. And whatever words are flowing from my lips are the words that only the Holy Spirit wants me to speak. I cannot speak words which I want to speak, but the Holy Spirit in me is inspiring me to speak the words which my which the listeners, which my which the brothers and sisters have to only hear because he knows what is your need. He knows what is your requirement. He knows at what stage of spiritual life you are, how low you are, how high you are, at what stage you are, so that you can take those words, apply them in your life, and start growing at whatever stage you are in your spiritual life. Let us go and take another scripture, Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 14. The human spirit will endure sickness, but a broken spirit, who can bear? A broken spirit, who can bear? You know, brothers and sisters, there is another scripture and another verse in the Amplified, it says, the strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily care, but a broken and wounded spirit, who can bear? A broken and wounded spirit, who can bear? You know, brothers and sisters, when we pray in tongues, we are actually making our spirit strong. Let me say this again. A person who is praying in tongues is actually strengthening himself in his spirit. And in order to strengthen yourself in your spirit, if you and I can pray in tongues daily, you know, when I, when I began to understand the gift of tongues, there were times in my life when I was just, when I was driving to work, I was sitting at my workplace. Whenever my work involved me to go outdoors, as soon as I left my office to sit in the car, I would just start praying in tongues. Today, when I'm sitting in this lockdown, when I am in the house doing my household chores, helping out in my home, or probably even when I'm sitting down to study and prepare my notes, or for that matter, when I'm just driving my car. I was sitting and, you know, a, a, a week or 10 days ago, we drove all the way from Pune to Goa. And it is almost about a, a four and a half, uh, four and a half, uh, you know, uh, 4, 000, uh, 420 kilometers distance, about almost seven hour journey. What were we doing on the way? We were just praying in tongues. And you know, when you pray in tongues, you are only strengthening yourself in your spirit. As you begin to strengthen yourself in your spirit, you are really becoming strong spiritually. You're edifying yourself. You're becoming spiritually fit. And you know, brothers and sisters, when we understand that in order for us to be, have spiritual muscles, in order, just like, a, like, like an athlete or someone goes into the gym and does his exercise in the gym, if we can pray in tongues daily, a few hours, and you don't need to sit there and pray in the, while you're cooking, while you're driving, while you're doing your household chores. If one can pray in tongues, I tell you, you will see the effect within a week to 10 days. Suddenly, as you begin to pray in the tongues and you ask the Lord to give you the gift of interpretation of tongues, people supernaturally will be attracted in your life and you will be reaching to people and counseling people. God will put people in your life where you will be a solution to their problem, not on your own wisdom, but on the wisdom that comes from above. Let's take another scripture, brothers and sisters, Romans chapter eight, verses 26 to 27. Romans chapter eight, 26 to 27. Likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, 
who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of god the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of god brothers and sisters let me give you an example i think in this class there must be so many mothers including my own wife and when a baby is born a mother will always speak to its baby and a baby will also speak to its mother do you know what sort of language does a mother speak to its baby a one month or two month old baby does it ever says how are you my child good morning are you all okay do does a does a mother speak that child i'm sure you as mothers would have spoken a language which is always called as a language of love and how do you speak that allelelele kuttu kuttu that's the language a mother will speak to the child is that right a mother's language to the child even if the child is is you know hungry or thirsty or whatever and the child cries even the mother just goes away and starts preparing the milk getting it ready in order to feed the child the mother is speaking words to the baby not words which the which normally you know you would speak to an adult but speaking a baby language and the baby also looks at the mother and starts saying alolo shalala speak some baby language and the mother and the baby are having a conversation you know brothers and sisters what sort of conversation can a baby have with its mother or what sort of conversation can a mother have with its baby even though they are not speaking english or if you are speaking you know hindi or marathi or any other language you are not speaking any language but you are speaking a language of love and you know brothers and sisters in the same way the holy spirit has introduced a language of us speaking with god words anointed by the holy spirit known as tongues let me say this again just like a mother and a baby speak a language of love which can nobody can understand except the mother can understand what the baby is saying and what the baby is saying the mother can understand because the mother knows when the baby is 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 hungry the baby will cry or there will be some sort of a language or some sort of communication in the same way the holy spirit has introduced a language for the children of god to speak with god words anointed by the holy spirit which is called as tongues and the holy spirit will inspire us to speak words according to the mind of god this is exactly what roman chapter 8 26 to 27 says we will be the, the holy the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of god according to the mind of god brothers and sisters when the holy spirit inspires us to speak words according to the mind of god i may not know even i may not know what you are thinking right now at this very moment i'm speaking to you words i cannot come to each one of you and think and understand what you are thinking but what you are thinking right now the holy spirit knows in the same way when i open my mouth and i speak in tongues my own spirit knows what i am thinking and so when i open my mouth and i speak in tongues what i have a desire of is now communicated by my spirit along with the holy spirit and it is straight going into the throne room of god what a wonderful way brothers and sisters for us to intercede directly to the throne room of god that's what we wrote in one of those points so for example if i want to know what you are thinking about me right now for example in this class right now you are not able to speak because you are only hearing me speak but say for example after a time of fellowship i now want you to speak based on the words you are speaking i can tell you what you are thinking about about me or what you are thinking about the word or what you are thinking about what what i have spoken in the same way brothers and sisters the holy spirit knows 
what you and I are thinking. And when we basically allow the Holy Spirit to inspire us to speak, and I open my mouth and speak in tongues, what I want to intercede before the throne of God is now carried in tongues right to the throne room of God. And now my prayer has been received directly on at the throne room of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, Satan gets paralyzed when a person speaks in tongues. Why? Because Satan does not understand tongues. Satan does not understand the language of love. Whenever anyone operates in love, Satan flees immediately. And when the Holy Spirit inspires us to speak in tongues, now the devil does not understand the language of love. The devil does not understand when his children, when the children of God are speaking to their loving father. And so because he cannot understand, he has to flee and your prayers without any hindrance are being received on the throne room of God and you receive answers to your prayers. What a wonderful promise, brothers and sisters. Therefore, praying in tongues is a prayer of faith and it is from the heart and not from the mind. Let me say this again. Praying in tongues is a prayer of faith and it comes from the heart and it does not come from the mind. Why? Because my mind will not understand what I am saying. I cannot understand what words I'm speaking, but my spirit understands. The Holy Spirit in me understands and he carries my prayer to the throne room of God. Now, tongues is a secret language between God and his children. Just as only a mother and a baby understand each other. So in order for us to communicate with our Heavenly Father effectively, when I received the Holy Spirit, I also received with it the gift of tongues. And I must understand that the gift of tongues is already inside of me. I only need to activate that gift by opening my mouth and speaking words and allowing the Holy Spirit inside of me to inspire me to carry these words to the throne room of God. Let me take you to another chapter in the book of, of James, chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. And in the book of James, chapter 5, verses 16 to 18, we, we hear that Elijah the prophet, he made a prayer of faith and the heavens were shut down for three and a half years. Can you imagine, brothers and sisters, when Elijah prays, the heavens are shut down and it does not rain for three and a half years. Do you think you and I can make that prayer and shut down the heavens wherever we are from it, from it raining? Surely not. Because at that time, Jesus had still not taken the sins of the whole world. At that time, when Elijah prayed, the people were in sin. And the word of God said that when the people were sinning, God would shut down the heavens. And so Elijah took that word from the Bible and he says, God, your word says that when your people disobey, you will shut the heavens. And so he made the prayer of faith. He made the prayer according to the word of God. And God had to listen to that prayer. But today, brothers and sisters, you and I cannot make such prayers of shutting down the heavens because God is not going to shut the heavens for that prayer because Jesus has already gone to the cross and paid for all our sins. So although Elijah was a righteous man and he prayed the prayer of faith, God heard his prayer because it was in an era when Jesus had still not come and gone to the cross for us. But today, brothers and sisters, when we take the word of God and we make a prayer of faith based on the word of God, now that word will always manifest if it is according to God's word and according to what the Holy Spirit has asked you and, and inspired you to pray. 
Let's go again for a few more verses before we actually go into the gift of tongues. Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 3. Let us all read that. Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. So here, brothers and sisters, the word of God says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, with all spiritual blessings. So, is God going to give you and me the gift of tongues? Or has he already given you the gift of tongues? He has given us all spiritual blessings. He never said he's going to give only a part of those blessings. He has given us all spiritual blessings, which means gift of tongues has already been given to each one of us. Brothers and sisters, we are not going to ask the Lord today to give us the gift of tongues because if we ask him to give the gift of tongues, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 is a scripture that you have still not been able to understand. In God's kingdom, the day you believed in Christ, you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. So if we pray that God will give it to me, it's a fact. And fact will never give us anything from God. But if we understand the truth that he has already given to us, then surely it's only for us to activate that gift and to receive it as a free gift because of his love for you and me. Tongues, brothers and sisters, is already inside of us. We must only activate and operate what we already have by faith by the renewing of our mind. Let me say this again. The gift of tongues is already inside every believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. We do not need to ask the Lord to give us that gift. We already have it inside of us. We need to activate the gift and we need to operate by faith by the renewing of our mind. We must understand, brothers and sisters, in God's kingdom, especially in the new covenant, there is nothing that God is going to give us because he has done everything when Jesus finished it on the cross, according to John chapter 19, verse 30. It is finished. It's already there. It's for us to renew our mind and to receive it by faith. So, brothers and sisters, the first thing that today you and I are going to do we are not going to ask God to give us the gift of tongues, but we are going to activate it, which is already inside of us by faith. Let us go on a little bit further. For last few verses, scriptures, before we actually go into tongues. Mark chapter 11, verse number 24. And let's read that and see what it says. Mark chapter 11, verse number 24. So I tell you, whatever you ask for, in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. In the word says, believe that you have received it. It never says you pray and then you will have it. When you pray, believe that you have received it, which means if you believe that you already have it inside of you, you have already received it, then surely, brothers and sisters, my response to God is going to be thanksgiving. I am going to believe and say, God, thank you that you have already given the gift to me. And my response to God is going to be a response of thanksgiving, not a response of asking, but a response of gratitude, a response of thanksgiving, because he has already given me that gift. Now, for example, if I have a car with me, which is parked in my parking lot, I have the car, I have the driving license. 
can my car just remain at the parking lot without me taking it out? How would that be? I have the car, I have the car keys, I have a driving license to, to drive, but my car is still parked in my parking lot. How does that look, brothers and sisters? In the same way, I have the Holy Spirit inside of me. With the Holy Spirit, I already have the gift inside of me, but I am not using the gift because I have not taken the ignition key and put the ignition key in the car. Unless I take the key, put the ignition in the car, start the car and start driving it, the car will still stay at the parking lot or in my garage. In the same way, that gift of the Holy Spirit, which has been given to you of the gift of tongues, is sitting inside of us without being used. Although it is lying there, I must activate it because it is my response to renew my mind, to activate the gift which is inside of me and now enjoy what that gift is going to give me as, a, as, a, as an opening to all the other gifts. Because brothers and sisters, God's word is a seed. We must remember God's word is a seed and I must plant the word and only when I plant the word, then only it is going to bear the fruit of what that seed which I planted for is going to spring up and give me in my life. Let's go for the last final verse, final two verses before again, I want to give you a better understanding because when you understand now, getting the gift of tongues will be so easy for you because you will know how to activate it. Mark chapter 16, verse number 16 onwards. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved. But the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. So brothers and sisters, we read in Mark chapter 16 that those who believe shall speak in new tongues. This is what it says. Whenever those who believe, these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs, for example, if I'm going out in the sun, my shadow is going to follow me by default. In the same way, when I believe in Jesus Christ, these signs, like even the gift of tongues, is going to follow me because I believe. Believing will activate the gift of tongues because if I activate it by faith, then only am I going to receive what is already inside of me. If we go to verse number 20 in Mark chapter 16, let us read that. Verse number 20. And they went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirm the message by the signs that accompanied it. So when the disciples began to go out and began to preach the good news, what happened brothers and sisters? The spirit of God showed up there. The Lord began to manifest signs and wonders. So who was that Lord who was manifesting the signs and wonders? It was the Holy Spirit because Jesus is already at the right hand of the Father. It was the Holy Spirit there. And today, brothers and sisters, whenever the word is preached, the word that is preached will always be accompanied with signs and wonders. And who is the one who brings those signs and wonders to pass? It is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who will confirm the truth that is spoken. Brothers and sisters, let us remember one thing. Whenever God's word is preached, whenever the truth of God's word is preached, the Holy Spirit is always present there. 
the Holy Spirit always confirms the word that is preached with accompanying signs and wonders. The Holy Spirit will always confirm the truth that is spoken there with accompanying signs and wonders. And therefore, brothers and sisters, today, as you hear the truth of God's word, as you hear on the gift of tongues, as you hear what tongues is all about, as you hear how to receive the gift of tongues, the Holy Spirit is the one who's going to confirm what the word has been spoken. Confirm that word with accompanying signs and wonders. And you are going to manifest, you are going to activate, you are going to receive the gift of tongues. Brothers and sisters, please remember one thing. The Bible is not a theory book. The Bible is not a book of stories. The Bible is not fiction. The Bible is not history. The Bible is not something that, you know, you can just read it and you can think maybe it's, it's, it's God's word, but there is more to it. The word of God is complete. The word of God is total. The word of God is all inclusive. If you and I can believe the word of God, we can always expect the Holy Spirit to show up there and confirm what word has been preached with accompanying signs and wonders. Before we go, one last verse. Some of the Holy Spirit wants me to teach you one more last verse. Acts chapter 19, verses 6 to 7. Acts chapter 19, verses 6 to 7. Let us read that. Let's take the final verse before we actually go into the gift of tongues. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. So here it says in Acts chapter 19, 6 to 7, that when Paul laid his hands on those 12 people, all of them received the Holy Spirit. There were 12 people there and Paul had to lay his hands on them. And the word of God says that all 12 of them received the Holy Spirit. They received the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, today in this class, as I can see, there are 40 people, including myself. The word of God says, God does not have any favorites. He shows no partiality. If you believe what you just heard, that when you receive the Holy Spirit, which we spoke about two days ago, if you truly believe that you have received the Holy Spirit, you also with the Holy Spirit have received the gift of tongues. It is for you to renew your mind and to receive the gift which is already inside of you. So at this very moment, if you can renew your mind and you can now release what you have inside of you and activate the gift of tongues, you are going to see God's glory. You are going to put on that ignition key and now allow the Holy Spirit to manifest the sign of the gift of tongues. So at this point in time, brothers and sisters, now that you know that we are not going to ask the Lord to give us the gift of tongues. We are not going to ask the Lord to give us the gift of the Holy Spirit, but we are only going to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We are going to receive that gift of tongues. At this point in time, I want each of you to please take a convenient position. Each one of you, please, if you are standing, if you are in any, any uncomfortable position or anywhere for that matter, please take a nice convenient position and please close your eyes. Keep your hands in a position of receiving. Don't keep your hands closed. Don't keep your hands on your head. Keep your hands open this way as in a position of receiving and close your eyes while I make a prayer for you. And as I pray, I am going to 
really, as I'm going to stretch out my hand on the screen and I'm going to pray, I want you all, as I pray, to start opening your mouth and start saying hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep praising God. Keep opening your mouth and praising God. Remember, the Holy Spirit is not going to make you open your mouth. We spoke about that two days ago when we, said, when we spoke about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is only going to inspire you to speak in tongues. But it is your faith, it is your action that you should open your mouth and start praising God. So as you begin to praise God and start saying hallelujah, desiring the gift, you tell the Lord, Lord, I desire the gift of tongues this morning. I desire this gift, this gift of tongues this day. And those of you who already have the gift of tongues, please start praying in tongues because that gift altogether is going to empower and release the gift of tongues. And as I'm going to pray for you, I am also going to pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be released upon you. So don't be disappointed if you are not able to speak. It's a matter of you removing the block. God has already put that gift inside of you. You are going to start praising and thanking God and saying hallelujah. And as I pray, and I also pray in tongues with you, we are going to see the manifestation of the gift of tongues wherever you are. So please take a convenient position. Close your eyes. Do not focus on other family members of your house. Do not worry about anybody. This is you and God. This is your relationship between you and God. You are not supposed to let anybody come in your way. Do not allow any distractions to come in your way. Do not even worry about if people are going to, in your house, going to call you a little bit psychic or gone crazy. Doesn't matter who thinks what about you. Because when you pray in tongues, you are not understanding what you say. Neither does anybody around you understand. Only God understands. The Holy Spirit is carrying your prayer. Today is the day for you and me, for you to release that gift of tongues and to receive. So let's pray. Let's close our eyes. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these brothers and sisters of mine. They have believed that you have already given them the gift of tongues. All this time, dear Lord, they have been waiting on you to give them the gift of tongues when you have already put that gift inside each one of us when we received the Holy Spirit. And so, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as my brothers and sisters renew their minds and activate what is already inside of them. As they believe Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 which says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing and that every spiritual blessing includes the gift of tongues. In Mark chapter 16 verse 16 it says that those who believe shall show the signs, the sign of the gift of tongues. So Father, the truth is going to set my brothers free right now. It is the truth of your word that sets them free. And so now, as they speak in tongues, as they worship you, let the Holy Spirit anointing be released upon my brothers and sisters inside each one as they receive the gift of tongue. Let us raise our hands right now. Let's say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I rebuke the spirit of, un of unbelief right now. I rebuke that spirit of un unbelief right now. Every spirit of unbelief. Get out right now from my brothers and sisters. I release the holy fire right now. I release the holy fire right now. Receive the gift of tongues. Receive, receive. Come on, come on. Keep praising, keep praising. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hula ba shikara la la la. Hiri li 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 li. Shara ma shikara la 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 la. Hira ra ba shikara la 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 la. Kobara shara ba shikiri li 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 li. Shara ma shira la 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 la. Hula ra kabara bara bara bara. Close your eyes, close your eyes, brothers and sisters. Focus, focus on the Lord. Do not focus on your words. Look at Jesus. Come on, praise Him. Hallelujah. 
Kula raba shira la 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 ira la 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 la. Kula raba ba 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 shira la ira la kara ba ra ra la la ri 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 ri. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Kula ra ra ya ra ra. Release, 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 release. Receive, receive the gift. Receive the holy fire. Receive the holy fire right now. Receive the anointing of the holy fire right now. As I stretch my hands right now. As you receive, as you receive the anointing. As you receive the holy fire. Receive the other gifts. Gift, gift of wisdom. The gift of healing. The gift of interpretation. The gift of wisdom, knowledge. The gift of understanding. Who raba shira la 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 la. Who raba ba 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 karaba shikiri ri 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 ri. La 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 ma ra ra shala ba la la ri 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 ri. Shala ma ra shika la 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 la. Hari la 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 la. Shura ra ba 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 ri 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 ri. Shana la ma shika la 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 lu 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 lu. Shala ma shira la 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 la. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Lord, I release, I release, I release the holy fire. Receive the holy fire. Receive the holy fire. Receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. As I speak right now, as that anointing fills you right now, as the holy fire takes complete control of you right now, receive the gift of tongues. Open your mouth and start praising and let the Holy Spirit inspire to praise Him. Hallelujah! 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 Who la ra ka ba ra ba ra ba ra ba shi gire re re har ya ma shi ra la 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 who ra ba shi na la la ka ri ya ra ma shi re 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 ha sha ra ma shi ra la 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 Hallelujah! 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 Receive! 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 Receive the holy fire! Receive the anointing! Receive! Receive in the name of Jesus as you renew your mind. This is the moment you have been waiting for. The whole, the gift of the tongues is already inside of you. It's time for you to release, activate it by opening your mouth and praising Him. Hallelujah! Who la ra ba shi ka ra la 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 hari ya ra ra la 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 shan na la ma shi ka ra ba 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 hari ya ma si ri 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 shan na ma shi ka ra la la hari ya ma shi ra la 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 who la ka ba ra ba 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 hari ya ma si ri 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 Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for activating. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing my brothers and sisters to renew their mind. Thank you, Jesus, right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for releasing, for releasing the holy fire, not only the gift of tongues, but many of my brothers receiving the gift of healing, the gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, the gift of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, the gifts of you know preaching the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the signs and wonders. The signs and wonders, brothers and sisters. Even you don't feel anything right now. Believe that you have received it because faith does not allow go based on feelings. It goes based on your decision. It goes based on faith. It goes based on your believing. Therefore, receive right now. And if you have received it, keep thanking Him, thanking Him. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father in heaven, I thank you and praise you for releasing, for helping the, the, my brothers and sisters to activate this gift of tongues, to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that as my brothers and sisters understood the word, they understood the truth of your word. Your word says in John eight thirty two, "We shall know the truth, and the truth shall set us free." I thank you for giving them right now, helping them to receive that gift which was already inside of them, helping them to activate it and receive it in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen.